Hey, look at that. It's Mr. Biped. And he looks like he's ready to be rigged. So, let's get to it. Let's start by creating a root bone, so that we can parent things to it as we go. Next, let's create the torso rig. We're going to do the reverse spine pivot slide construction first. Wow, that's a mouthful. Create two duplicates of the torso chain, one for the reverse chain, and one for the control chain. And let's name them appropriately. Remember, these are both mechanism chains. And let's add MCH to the original chain too, since we'll be making separate controls for it later. They'll never be directly manipulated. Now let's reverse the reverse chain. and set up the parenting to the control chain. And now position the reverse chain bones appropriately. Remember that the default pivot point will be at the hips. and create the bone to anchor the base of the reverse chain. Name it body since it will ultimately control the location of the torso. Now set up the copy location constraints for the reverse chain. and now set up the copy location constraints for the main chain for the sliding. And let's name those constraints. Now add the copy transform constraints to the main chain's bones. Remember to put it at the top of the stack on the base bone. We don't want it to override the locations of our sliding constraints. Now let's create the custom property for the pivot slide, and set up the relevant drivers.
Yay, it works! Now let's set up the torso controls. To do that, we're going to act as if this control chain were the actual torso chain. All of its transformations will then get transferred to the actual torso chain, except with the pivot slide applied on top. One nice thing about this setup is that we don't have to flip the hips bone, like we did in the earlier video, because the pivot slide system takes care of shifting the pivot point for us. So let's jump straight to adding the intermediate parents. Make sure their roll is aligned well with the spine. and set up the parenting. Now create the three control bones. Now add and configure the constraints on the intermediate parents. We're going to use copy transform constraints here so that the animator can play with squash and stretch if they want to. Now create the parent for the middle control, and constrain it to the top and bottom controls. Use copy transforms for this as well. We're almost done with the torso now, just a few more things. First, let's parent everything that doesn't already have a parent to the root bone. Make sure we got it right. Excellent. Now let's move the main chain to another layer. We'll use the very last armature layer as a special layer, where bones from the original deformation armature go if they're not being used as controls. It's useful for us to be able to find them easily. And let's move the reverse chain to a different layer. Now we just have the control chain and the controls. 
Let's move the control chain to line up with the anchor bone. and constrain its location to it. This isn't strictly necessary. The rig will work just fine no matter where the location of the control chain is. But I just feel better when it follows the rest of the rig. Now move it to a hidden layer. And now move all of the controls to line up with the anchor bone. Now constrain the controls to follow the location of the anchor. The anchor will serve as our location control, while the three other controls will serve to control the rotation of the torso. And while we're at it, let's lock the axes of the controls, including the anchor. And let's toggle off local location on the anchor bone, so that its translation axes are guaranteed to line up with the root bone. And finally, let's move the middle control's parent to a hidden layer. And that's it! We've rigged the torso! It's a bit involved, but in the end, it's really worth it. There are definitely some decisions to make here though, which I kind of breezed over. The main one was controlling the location of the torso. I've separated this out into a separate control, but if you want, you can set it up so that the location is controlled by one of the rotation controls. I chose to make it separate because, since the pivot point can potentially be anywhere, it can feel weird to have to select, say, the hips to move the torso, when the pivot point is in the upper body. But feel free to experiment and figure out what feels best to you when you're animating. Let's also take the time now to create the custom shapes for the torso rig. We only have four controls here, three of which basically do the same kind of thing. The three rotation controls can be circles. Let's assign these shapes, and let's use the at field to make the shapes appear on the parts of the body they control. Use the main chains bones for that. Now let's align and scale the shapes to appear how we want them to.
Now it is much more intuitive to select and rotate the controls. Now we just need to make a shape for the location control. To do that, we're actually going to create an empty. We can adjust its appearance and size in the empties properties. Finally, move the shape objects to the last scene layer. Now the torso is much more intuitive to manipulate. It's really hard to use before adding the shapes. One of the cool things about having a separate location control like this is that it also gives us an indication of where the pivot point is at all times. So now let's do the arms. This process is the same as on Mr. Hot Dog. There are a couple of things to be mindful of though. The first is that the socket switch is going to be attached to the shoulder bones, not the body bones, because the arm is supposed to follow the shoulder now. Mr. Hot Dog never had any shoulders. The second is that any part that needs to be the children of the body, such as the IK elbow targets, should be the children of the original torso chain, which we put on the last armature layer. This is because this chain is the only one that moves precisely with the body. The other torso chains are just mechanisms to get this chain to move the way we want. So if you want a control to follow with the body, you need to make it the child of this chain.
and now let's separate the arm rigs into separate layers. Let's put the FK controls on this layer. And the IK controls on this layer. And let's put the original arm bones on the last layer, along with the original torso bones. And let's put the mechanisms for the FK and IK arms on the layers directly below the FK and IK controls. This helps keep things organized and easy for us to find later if we need to. And finally, let's move the FK and IK bones back into alignment with the original. And now, let's rig the fingers. But we're going to make one really simple change. In addition to letting the fingers bend inward, we're also going to let them bend backwards. That means our animation is going to be a little bit different. Frame 1 is going to have them bent backwards. On frame 11, they're going to be unbent. And on frame 21, they'll be bent forwards. Now let's configure the action. And here we also need to make some adjustments. Instead of 1.0 and 0.5, we're going to use 1.5 and 0.5. That way 1.0 will map to 11, which is our unbent frame in the finger bend action. Now when we scale the control up, the finger bends backwards. And when we scale the control down, the finger bends forward. Cool. The rest of the process is exactly the same as before, so I'll do the rest of the finger rigging off screen. See you on the flip side. So now the fingers are rigged, but let's hold off on moving things to different layers for the fingers. We'll do that at the end. Now let's set up the palm rig. The simplest rig ever. Actually, that's not the simplest rig ever. The shoulders are the simplest rig ever. We're just going to use the bones directly. The only thing we need to do is switch them to Euler and lock the Y rotation axis. Make sure to choose a good rotation order for it. And we should probably lock their locations as well. Now we're almost done with the upper body. We just need to build the head and neck rig. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember to attach things to the original torso chain, not the torso controls. And remember to parent things without a parent to the root bone.
Let's move the original head bone to the last layer. And let's move the mechanism bones to a hidden layer. And finally, move the head control to its rightful place at the base of the neck. Hooray, it works! And I'm going to quickly make some control shapes for it off screen. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that the head control should appear to be at the location of the original head bone. Holy crap, we are so close to being done. All we have left are the legs and feet. Let's start by duplicating the legs and feet for the IK and FK rigs. The whole process is pretty much identical to the arms until we get to the foot roll, so I'm just going to breeze through this until we get there.
To rig the foot roll, let's first move everything to appropriate layers. Put all the FK stuff on the fourth layer. And move all of the IK stuff to the fifth layer. And move the original leg and feet bones to the last layer. And let's also move all of the FK and IK bones to be aligned with the original bones again. Now, let's create the rocket rig. Let's now parent the foot to the rocker bone, and the toe to the rocker parent. And lock the toe's axes. And to finish the foot rig, we just need to set up an overall IK foot control. And let's also parent the knee target to the IK foot control. And to finish off the leg rig, let's create the IK FK switch on the IK foot control.
Now let's sort everything into layers that hasn't been already. I'm pretty sure that's just the legs, feet, and hands at this point. To start, put the FK and IK mechanism bones of the legs and feet on hidden layers below their controls. Now let's put the original bones of the palm and fingers that aren't going to be directly used by the animator on the last layer. And let's move the finger digit tweak bones to the sixth layer. That gets them out of the way so that they don't clutter the view, since the animator won't often be using them. And ta-da! The actual rigging is done. Now we just need to create the shapes for the control bones. I'm going to do that off screen. Refer back to the Mr. Hot Dog videos to see how to do this. Be back in a moment. There is one last thing I'd like to show you that can be handy. We have a lot of controls on screen here, and at times it may become confusing for the animator what controls go to what. To help alleviate this, we can color code the controls for the left and right sides of the body. This is accomplished in Blender through something called Bone Groups. If you go to the Armature Properties, you'll see a panel labeled Bone Groups. We can add as many bone groups as we like, but we're just going to add two. Name them L and R for the left and right sides of the body. Now we can start assigning bones to them. Assign all of the left controls to the L group and all of the right controls to the R group. Now we can select the colors that we want each group to display with. I usually look for a bluish color for the left group and a reddish color for the right group. Ta-da! We now have color-coded controls. Nifty, eh? And that's it. Our last rig is complete. Congratulations!